You know, when I was a young lad, I wanted real life to be more like the video games I played. Seeing as I have yet to be given a side quest by a talking cat in a dark alley, I figured I'd make my own game the best way I knew how. Today I'm blowing the dust out of the cartridge to show you folks how I animate the Maker Adventure series. So strap in, grab your favorite caffeinated beverage, and get ready for some serious level grinding. The first thing I need to do is pick my character. Let's go with this guy. Hey, hey, hey! Brilliant. I'm just gonna grab a few more reference photos because the better your reference, the easier it is to get a sense of defining characteristics, shapes, movements, etc. Luckily, I've got plenty of reference material available. Thanks, Al. Now that I've got plenty of reference material, I'm gonna throw the whole lot into Illustrator. I know not everyone uses or has access to Adobe programs, but the next few steps can be done in whatever image making software you've got. You could go super old school and draw by hand. No thank you. I'm gonna set up my artboard to be 1920 by 1080, which is bigger than I need, but gives me a better sense of the character within the video frame. So the first thing I need to do is make my base out. I'll take my best reference photo onto my artboard, boop, and draw right on top of it, on a new layer of course. I'm keeping the shapes simple and breaking them up at the joints because it'll make my job easier as I create the rest of the animation. This takes a bit of time, but I'm focusing on the defining characteristics, namely the hair, the eyes, and the great big bushy beard. There we go. I'd say that's a pretty decent likeness. Woohoo! Now that I've got my best boy drawn up, I need to make him move. I do that by creating what's called a sprite sheet. This is a page containing every iteration of your character in a single frame form. For reference, here's what mine looks like. Look at that guy. Since I have a base form, I can copy it onto a new layer, move it over a little bit, and readjust the shapes to create the next frame. Less movement between frames makes for a smoother animation, but it also means having to draw more frames to create an action. Since I'm going for the retro look, I don't really need a super smooth animation. Part of the charm of 16-bit video games was their ability to minimize frame rates and let your brain fill in the rest. Now you may be thinking, this is a lot to unpack and I'm still at level one. That's okay. Skill grinding takes time and it's dangerous to go alone. Take this. Skillshare is a massive multiplayer online community with tons of crafts to explore, projects to create, and the support of fellow players. High level animation wizards like B here create super in-depth tutorials that talk through every aspect of character design and animation. I think it's awesome that she shares the project files so you can have a base model to practice with. You can share your work like these folks did here, talk with your fellow creators within the classrooms or in larger groups, and even chat with the teacher. This is a fantastic tutorial. Thank you. Also, your banana shirt is great. It's also incredibly affordable. Skillshare is giving away two free months of premium membership to help you explore your creativity. And after that, it's only around $10 a month. I mean, I spend more guild than that on coffee. Just click the link in the description box. Make this new year the one where you explore new skills, deepen existing passions, and get lost in creativity with Skillshare's online classes. You guys know I'm all about sharing skills and supporting creativity, so 
Thanks Skillshare for supporting the adventure. Speaking of which, we have to finish our quest. The next step is throwing this file over to After Effects so we can make our best boy move. I'll set a sequence up at 24 frames a second for a few seconds. Then I'll import the file making sure we select footage and retain layer sizes and boop. Now we have the individual layers ready to put into a sequence. I'll start by making sure they're all in the correct order, select them all, cut them down to three frames. This means that my eight images at three frames a piece gives me exactly one second of animation because frame rates get confusing and math is hard. I just need to offset the layers now, duplicate them a couple of times and readjust to create a long loop. Oh, and I need to add one effect that really sells the look. I'll come over to my effects window and type in mosaic and then double click. This pixelates the image and now it's just a matter of adjusting our resolution, making sure we select sharp colors, otherwise it's a bit fuzzy. Well, time to play it back and see how it turned out. There's a bit of skill that goes into making a character come to life, but really it's just knowledge of your tools and a lot of patience. Let's say I want to change his outfit. I can go into my Illustrator file, give Al a new look, and BAM! Now he's Jane. I think he needs a friend. Boop! Steve's a friend. If I want to add any other character animations, I would just add them to the sprite sheet. Maybe something like this. And then Steve. And now I just animate those. And then I export it and put the whole thing in Premiere and add a background and sound effects and final polish and... Possibilities are endless, but start simple, grow your skills, and then build your world. Remember, if you want more adventure in your life, make it.